Okay, we are going to study the integumentary system next. Yeah. And so the integumentary system it concludes skin, hair, nails, and glands. So we'll look at all of those structures. Today we're going to look at the skin and how it's structured. And for the functions, there's it's for protection. Um, sensation, so it protects against microorganisms entering your body. It also protects against abrasions because the skin will slough off. Sensations like pain, touch, um, heat. Temperature regulation, how does the skin help regulate temperature? Sweat. The integumentary system, I guess, not just the skin. So sweat glands. Some insulation. And then the blood vessels, as you get hot, what happens to the blood vessels? They dilate and your skin gets pink, more pink because there's more blood releasing the heat. And if you get really cold, the blood vessels constrict. That yeah. Goosebumps is from these muscles right here. They're called erector pili. They contract and it makes your hair stand up on end. No, it's just a reaction to cold. No, I don't think it makes it grow. It just makes the hair shaft come out. It's already in the, you know, and then it just pushes it out a little more. But it's not like it grows faster. Then vitamin D production is um, the sunlight helps change some precursors um, and, and just start the process of making vitamin D. It goes through your kidneys and other organs also, but the vitamin D is needed for absorption of calcium. And which is why, you know, in the winter, they say it's, you get blues or what is that called? The winter blues or is it, have you heard of that before? People get more depressed in the, because of the, the sunlight and, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like winter, but. Or like people who live in Alaska where it's dark for six months, they're supposed to take some vitamin D supplements probably is a good idea just because they don't have, <laughs> then you get cancer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'd... yeah, but you don't have the intense UV rays. And you should protect yourself when you go outside also. Yeah. You get cancer. <laughs> okay, so the epidermis, the layers of the skin. We have the epidermis is an epithelial tissue layer. It's very thin. Um, it's very superficial, the superficial layer, and the dermis is deep to the epidermis and it's a layer of connective tissue and it gives the skin its structural strength. And then the hypodermis is actually not part of the skin but it's right under the dermis. It has some loose connective tissue that helps connect the skin to underlying structures. Yeah. Probably like those, the desmosomes and the tight junctions holding everything together. And yep. So the ep epidermis is avascular, meaning there's no blood vessels going to the epidermis. So in order to get nourishment, they have to rely on 
diffusion from capillaries of the papillary layer of the dermis. So from the dermis, the dermis has blood vessels, so that's why the epidermis is very thin because it does, you don't want to have to diffuse nutrients across many layers of cells. And it is composed and arranged into layers or strata, and it is separated from the dermis by the basement membrane. And we looked at the epidermis type cells um, in our microscopes, and we looked at keratinized stratified epithelium. Uh, I don't know if the basement membranes consider it. I think it might be considered part of the dermis because I'm not for sure. But that membrane just connects the two, I know, but I don't know if it's actually considered in dermis or epidermis. So the different types of cells that are in epidermis are keratinocytes, which are most of the cells in your skin, and they produce keratin which fill the cells as they reach the surface. When, when the cells die, they're filled with keratin. And then melanocytes uh, contribute to skin color. They can produce melanin. And melanin um, is produced and then transferred to the keratinocytes. And everyone has the same, um, roughly the same number of melanocytes, but the amount of melanin they produce is different. And so melanin contributes to skin color, eye color, hair color. It's all part of, it's the melanin. It's a dark pigment. Does anyone have a question over there? Oh. Mm -hmm. Or when it helps prevent or protect against UV light, so when you go outside and you're tanning or whatever, it produces more melanin so that it protects you more, and that's why you get dark in the sun, tan. Um, the epidermal cells are desquamate, which <clears throat> just talking about how the really deep layer close to the basement membrane continued to go undergo mitosis, and then as they move towards this, as more cells are moved or are made, the cells move upward, get filled with keratin, die, and then they slough off into your mattress. Your mattress, like, after a life, like, it gets heavier year after year because of your skin cells. Yeah, I don't remember how many pounds, but protectors. Yeah, they do make pretty. Black Like Me, have you? You got, juniors will read it later. Yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He does that. I think he had the disease where they, it's kind of splotchy. And so then he, I don't know if it was creams or however, he made it all just more white. I'm not for sure if the cell dies and then it gets filled with keratin or if the keratin is what kills it. It's just a protein, though. Keratin? No. Oh, to make you produce more melanin? No. You'd have to go through a doctor. Okay, keratinization is as the cells move towards the layers and they get filled with keratin, just that whole process. <coughs> So the bottom layer of the epidermis is the stratum basal, and it's the deepest portion, and it's just one layer of cells. One layer of cells right along the basement membrane, and there's very high mitotic activity there. It's, they're reproducing, mitosis is going on a lot in this, in this um, strata, and then the cells, as they move away, get keratinized. And it takes about 40 to 56 days from for one cell to go from the stratum basal all the way to the surface of your skin. So every 40 to 56 days, you have all new skin. Yeah. Yep. 
because everything's been sloughed off and mm-hmm. yep <laughs> no everything should probably be sloughed off by then then <clears throat> Okay, the stratum corneum is the most superficial, so what you can actually feel when you touch your skin is the stratum corneum, and it's superficial, consists of cornified cells being filled with keratin, and you can make the stratum corneum thicker through use and like friction, and that would cause a callus to form, and that's what a callus is, is just thick, a thick layer of the stratum corneum. A lot of people have calluses right on their hands or whatever, just from increased friction and use in that area. If you have a callus right on the ball of your feet, like right on the outside right here, it's called a corn. Yeah, and then the, what is that, when the bone pops, a bunion. Bunions, like when your, your bone sticks out more. Yeah. That's, yeah. And they, they can go in and remove it, like if you have surgery on Those can become really painful. Yes. Planted warts? They're just warts on the bottom of your feet. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you work them? No. Is there a virus? You know what they say for planters warts that gets rid of them is you put duct tape on them because they it suffocates the virus like it, they don't get any oxygen and then it. Compound W. Compound W. I think yeah. That's. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Or you can just use a vinyl clippers and kind of clip it all out and put that stuff in there. Yeah, it gets rid of it. <laughs> I'm not for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could clip them all off and they wouldn't do they come back have you tried do they come back <laughs> so this is a picture of all the layers and this is this base, stratum basal just this one layer right here and then there's the intermediate layer and then here's the stratum corneum at the top where it would slough off So skin color can be determined by three factors. Pigments, blood, and the thickness of stratum cornea. So the two pigments that really uh, change skin color is melanin, which we've talked about, um, and carotene. And one, the deficiency of melanin, or the absence of melanin, is called albinism. So if you have albino, they have very pale skin, and can be it affects their skin, hair, eye color, all that can be is determined by melanin. So that would be what would be affected. And then carotene is a yellow pigment from vegetables, like carrots, and it accumulates in the stratum corneum and adipose cells of the dermis and the hypodermis. So if you eat a lot of carotene. It can accumulate and cause your skin to have a yellow color, which is different from jaundice. We will talk about jaundice, but this is no. Yeah, see, it's more common in when you're born, yeah. Yeah, because your liver isn't functioning quite right. Yeah. That's called cyanosis. Oxygen deficiency. Oh, 
that's for, he took silver, uh, colloid silver, to people take it to like if they're sick or like flu or cold or something, and he took a lot of it and it yeah, it's from that. So the other factor is the blood. So as your blood flow increases, you have this reddish, um, reddish hue in your skin. Can increase during blushing, anger, or inflammation, and that's just because your blood vessels at the surface of the skin dilate, and you have a red, more red color. It's just a reaction. I don't know. I wish you could, and you can't really control it. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that. Oh. <laughs> and then <clears throat> cyanosis is when you have a lack of blood oxygen and you get a bluish tint. So people, like if they're choking or something and they haven't been breathing for a long time, they would have a bluish tint to them. Yeah, or when babies are born, if they don't have, they don't start breathing right away, they would start having that bluish tint also. It starts more in like your fingertips and your mouth and stuff, but it would. I don't know if like, well, more pale. Yeah, I don't think. Because I think you'd have to be living to get the, like the blood has to be circulating, but you just don't have much oxygen, type thing. Right. Um, and then the thickness of the stratum corneum, because your thicker areas like calluses can look more yellow in color, and that would be just because of the thicker stratum corneum. The dermis then gives structural strength. It's connective tissue with many fibers, fibroblasts, melanocytes, or macrophages. <clears throat> um, it contains nerves, blood vessels, the hair follicle, smooth muscles, glands, and lymphatic vessels. The smooth muscle that's in the dermis are those erector pili, which give you the goosebumps. <clears throat> and we'll talk about glands and the hair follicles in more detail. And there's sensory um, nerves that help feel pain, itching, tickling, temperature, touch, pressure, and two-point discrimination. Well, shoot, I forgot to do that with the other class. We'll try doing that if we have time. <coughs> yeah. We'll do it a little later. And so the layers of the dermis, the one that we're going to really look at is the papillary layer, which is the very top layer of the dermis. And you have these ridges. So where you see the dermis go up and down, all these ridges, that is called, that's the papillary layer or the dermal papillae. And they are where, the, where, you, have, where you get your fingerprints. That's why you have fingerprints. Um, there's touch receptors, free nerve endings there as well. It, they reform. Oh, they do. It does, uh-huh. So like, no, it, but like, it gives you the same, you, you just have the same like fingerprints. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or isn't it on, have you seen the movie Seven? Yeah. With Brad Pitt, it's old. You were probably little when it came out, you probably weren't able to watch it. But I think he cuts off his fingerprints, the guy. Hmm. Depends on how deep. I would say it depends on how deep it 
go. Oh, a scar would look, it wouldn't grow back with your. Yeah, it would, you wouldn't have the right fingerprint in a scar. <laughs> Unless you burn like really deep, like a normal burn, like we would have. I mean, you'd have to like really burn it. Yeah. Then it would maybe change it. I mean, it was. <laughs> then the cleavage lines are stri that they just the direction that the elastin and collagen fibers run and it's important in how the skin is able to stretch or in surgery if you in, have an incision parallel to the lines like down here there's less stretching and pulling and against that incision so then there is um, less gapping, faster healing, and less scar tissue versus if they go across the cleavage lines, then there's more gapping and more you scar. More you can't see it. It's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they they take that in consideration. If there's there's sometimes where you have to go against it, and that's just how it is. But they would try to, if it has bigger incisions, they would try to go with it. Those lines. Oh, and then striae are just stretch marks from your skin being overstretched. And then, like, during pregnancy or even if you, like, people who lift a lot and get really big, bulky, really fast, they get stretch marks, like, right here and back here a lot of times. Far, probably from growing really fast. I can see that. Yep. <laughs> And then the hypodermis, last thing for today, is deep to the skin, so it's underneath the dermis. It's actually not a layer of the skin, it's underneath the skin. And it has the adipose tissue, um, macrophages, fibroblasts, and it's also called subcutaneous tissue, and it has about one half of the body's fat. So the subcutaneous tissue here would be this yellow part right here. This is the dermis, and then the epidermis right here. Um, it can be the uh, hypodermis is functions are the energy source, insulation, or padding. <coughs> your whole skin is underneath your dermis, like under everywhere, there's hypodermis. Mm -hmm. I would say so. So is that how the fat is on all your body? Yep. So it's like your skin, and then there's like fat under all of it? Mm -hmm. I mean, some layers are thicker than others and whatever, but, yep. <laughs> <laughs>